in this initial part of our being together, we have been focusing on how prayer, God's Word, and the sacraments are these supply lines that allow us to be filled with God, to be filled with the heart of Jesus. What I hope to do today is to show you how prayer, word, and sacrament can help us to have the very heart of God in light of this glorious feast day of the assumption of our mother, the mother of our Savior Jesus, and I also hope to model for you a way that you and I can speak about Mother Mary to others, especially to other Christians. So that's the twofold hope of this homily, to give you an example of how prayer, word, and sacrament can help us to have the heart of God, and then also to model for you a way that we can speak about the mother of Jesus to other people. I want to begin, though, by offering you a meditation that's inspired by the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So I'm going to invite you to please briefly close your eyes and to use your imagination in this meditation inspired by the Catechism of Holy Mother Church. So we imagine God our Father in his home, in heaven, this good and loving and mighty Father. And we imagine our Father on this very day, the day that his son Jesus and the holy angels brought Mother Mary, body and soul, into the kingdom, into our Father's house, and we watch our Father attentively as Mother Mary speaks and God our Father hears her voice and God our Father overflows with joy because at last he hears the voice of a daughter of Eve in his kingdom, in his home. You may open your eyes. You see, that's the reason why God our Father created you, to share his eternal life with you. And in the beginning, Adam and Eve, they walked with God, and they heard his voice, and they spoke to him. And ever since the rebellion of man, ever since we said no to the Lord God and Adam and Eve, and we were exiled from paradise, exiled from the kingdom, God our Father has been longing to hear once again the voice of the, his children in his home. And in this glorious feast day, when Jesus assumed Mother Mary body and soul into heaven, God our Father rejoices because at last his kids are starting to come home. We turn our focus now to God's Word, and in particular, the second reading. I want to offer you an insight that Archbishop Michael Burns shared once. It's an insight to help you get more when you sit to pray with the writings of St. Paul. Archbishop Burns' insight is this. Everything that Paul writes is in light of all that the Lord God has done and said. So in other words, when you read the writings of St. Paul, Paul is flushing out to you the consequences of who God is and all that he has done and all that he has accomplished. They're the things that naturally flow. So today's reading, for example, from 1 Corinthians, St. Paul begins by placing before us the resurrection of Jesus Christ, proclaiming something that the Lord God has done, proclaiming this amazing news that Jesus has trampled upon death, that Jesus is alive, and that you and I can know him and we can love him. So St. Paul begins his reflection 
by casting his gaze upon something that the Lord God has done, and then he begins to flush out the consequences of Jesus conquering death and rising from the dead. And Paul says, look, there's going to be an order in which all of us will then share in the victory of Jesus over sin and death. So, Jesus promised you that if you believe in Him, if you eat His flesh and drink His blood, that you will live forever and that He will raise you on the last day. And Paul's observation is that there's going to be an order to which we all participate in this victory of Jesus over sin and death. Now, doesn't it just make sense that the first person to share in the victory of Jesus over sin and death would be Jesus' mom? It just makes sense. It's the most fitting thing that the first person to participate fully in the victory of our Lord and Savior Jesus over sin and death would be his mom. That Jesus, who for nine months rested beneath the immaculate heart of Mother Mary, would not allow the body of his mother to taste corruption. So do you see how God's Word sheds abundant light on the mysteries we celebrate and how God's Word teaches us how to share our faith with others? If you want to tell other people about Mother Mary, you always begin by talking about Jesus and how much you love him and your faith in him and in his victory. And then you can show how it only makes sense that the first person to share in the victory of Jesus over sin and death would be his mom. That's why he assumed her body and soul into heaven. The next thing I want to do is I want to speak briefly about prayer, and I don't use that word lightly. I mean it. I want to speak briefly about prayer, this wonderful supply line. Once when I was praying and I was reflecting on the prayer, the Hail Mary, Jesus showed me that the Hail Mary is another way of proclaiming John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Because the Hail Mary is recalling, it's bringing before us that moment in our history when God gave us his son, when Jesus was conceived in the womb of our mother Mary. So when we pray the Hail Mary, there ought to always be this intense faith and joy and gratitude as we're recalling who God is and his immense love and all that he has done for us in the gift of our Savior, Jesus. So this supply line of prayer, when we pray, our words should never fall to the ground. Sometimes I think we offend God and we pray, and we're blah, 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 blah. And our words are just falling to the ground, and we're not even paying attention to what we're saying, and we're not speaking those words from the heart. So before we pray, the saints teach us, ask yourself, to whom are you speaking? If you're speaking to Jesus, you're speaking to your Lord, to your King, and to your Savior. Let your words reflect who he is and what he has done for you. If you're talking with Mother Mary, you're speaking to the queen of heaven and all of creation. So when we pray, our words ought to always ascend. Lastly, the gospel. And with this, we focus on the sacrament. One of our ladies' feast days, I was ill-prepared for Mass, um, not because I was negligent uh, hanging out at the casinos, but being God's priest, there are times when uh, 
just like being a mom or dad, just being in the world where we're pulled in a thousand different directions. And so I showed up to the evening mass on one of Our Lady's feast days, and I just begged Jesus. I said, Jesus, please give me something to share about your mom. Now, I learned how to do this because in the early years of my priesthood, I would always go to Mother Mary and I would ask her to help me tell other people about her. And every time I did this, she would dupe me because all she wanted to do was talk about Jesus. And so on Mary's feast days, I preached the best sermons I ever preached about Jesus and I never mentioned Mother Mary. So I learned I had to go to Jesus and ask him to help me love his mom like he does, to help me to know his mom like he does. So I just turned to the Lord in the sacristy. I said, Jesus, please give me something to share. And he showed me the most beautiful thing I've seen so far in my life. When you and I get to heaven and we gaze into the eyes of Mother Mary, we're going to be overwhelmed by the beauty and the glory and the majesty of Jesus. Because the eyes are the mirror of the soul. And Mother Mary, for all the life of her son, she gazed upon him with such love. And so Mother Mary's heart and soul are completely filled to overflowing with Jesus. And so when you and I see her for the first time and we look into her eyes, we're going to be overwhelmed by the beauty and the glory of her son. And our Lord began to show me just different miracles of his that Mother Mary witnessed. And in particular, the last thing he showed me was today's gospel. The visitation when Mother Mary entered the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. What did Mother Mary see in this mystery? So she enters the home of Elizabeth, and Jesus is invisible, but he's present. Keep those two things in mind. He's invisible because he's in her womb, beneath her immaculate heart, but he's present. And what does Mother Mary witness? She witnesses her son Jesus fill Elizabeth and fill John the Baptist in his mother's womb with the Holy Spirit, with this immense joy. Do you see how in a few moments we too will have the same experience because here on our altar, Jesus is going to be invisible. He's going to be hiding behind the appearances of bread and wine. But with the eyes of faith, we can know that he's truly present. And so, my brothers and sisters, may our life of prayer, may our contact with God's Word open our hearts to recognize the presence of Jesus in the sacrament and to allow Jesus to move in mighty ways in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.